it is your belief, I believe, that optimal images have to or are, are, are an outgrowth of fully understanding the use of responsibly understanding the slice image and how tissue planes relate to the slice um, that that we have from from our probe is that is that close to correct how about you say it in six words <laughs> slice thickness plays a much larger role in the quality of your picture than is apparent and certainly that most of the people i know who do pocus ultrasound and a lot of the people who do what we would call departmental ultrasound the radiology department uh, yeah. especially are aware of the significance that that slice thickness plays in ultrasound did you say pocus people are aware of it they, they're not they, aware of it they're not whereas um, um hospital based and i i honestly think it has to do with the science of learning that you had to go through and the rest of us were able to go right straight to the strudel and had no idea how it was made. That's, and, that's uh, in, in theory, but in practice, uh, a lot of the people who had a formal training brush over that part as well, because it makes less of a difference in the classic radiology and obstetric applications. It is, it's less apparent until you start doing MSK. And MSK is a relative newcomer. It's, a, it's the new kid on the block and the people who do it are much less from mainstream radiology. And so it, it's, its significance hasn't been picked up, I don't think. I never hear of any of the clinicians I work with uh, and teach with talking about it. And yet for me, it's a really, really important part of uh, what makes a good image is that appreciation or more precisely why less experienced, less, uh, uh, less adept practitioners don't get as good a quality images. Uh, and it's, it's that once you get past the anisotropy, everyone thinks it's, it's job done. Whereas in actual fact, you have to take in, into account the slice thickness when you're looking to maximize, certainly for small structures. Uh, what's going on and, and understand what's going on. So when I read your contribution, notice it was the fine print that John contributed. <laughs> I threw out some lists of stuff. When I read your paragraph, John, I, you were talking about axial plane or, a, a, well, this basically, as I was reading it, I wasn't three sentences into this. And I said, I have to get my head around what he's actually talking about because longitudinal, and here's the truth. I'm embarrassed to say this too. Um, you said basically remembering your one in 60 rule from your navigation training. These have been pockets of hours of me learning. I never heard of a one in 60 rule. You'd think I would have because now when I pulled it up on YouTube uniquely, it was either from Australia or the UK that y'all are talking about the one in 60 rule, but it makes perfect sense when you're, when, when you're navigating and, and, you know, uh, an hour and uh, I don't know why I haven't. It, it's I can't, just, I can't imagine you passed your pilot's license. In fact, without... here's the thing. I knew I set myself up. I, I was lifting up the softball to you, John, to just <laughs> knock the sucker. <laughs> you see, I don't. I don't know when you did your flight, your pilot's license. That was, but it was a when while I was, back, but when I was training, there were no, there was no sat nav, and oh, yeah. uh, I, and I you had done. to navigate with a with, with a map strapped to your knee, <laughs> and, and and it was one of the rules you said. You know, you you've got to work out what your error is, yes. and you've got to be able to work it out with a pencil, looking down in between flying the airplane. It and makes one, perfect sense, John. Yeah. So uh, I, so yes. It was 86 that I got my, no, it was, it was well before that. It was 82 that I got my pilot's license. So I was, it was long before, it was when uh, RNAV was just coming in or, or the stuff in boats, whatever they had uh, in, 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 in boats. But yeah. it doesn't matter. To me, what 
it wasn't until I understood what you were saying that ultimately you then said, if you were just six degrees off of this particular plane, it would, it would double your, it would, it would, it would worsen your resolution. It would, it would lessen your resolution. Um, we're just, I'm just bouncing around some concepts that I need to clear up with you, John. And, and so if you're okay, I want to just try and see if this will work. I'm going to pull up a third contributor to this discussion. I don't know where it's going to show up on our screen here, but it's going to be the actual diagrams, and they may not even work for you, John, but this yeah. axial plane and this lateral plane, these were totally new to me because there's so many. Is it short axis? Is it axial? Is it transverse? There's yeah. so many things that, again, take me back to the fact that I'm begging you to go to this, give me one word, John, and I'll go as your uh, disciple. You know, I, 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 will, I will decide to use that in the rest of my training because as it relates to the plane of the probe, it, it's just not relevant. I mean, I, it took me a while if, to, to take your words. That's how come I said to you, I understand your words individually, but when I put them together, and if you notice how many hours it was, when I put that, that entry on there that said, I have to look at this. And then I was in bed when all of a sudden I said, honey, anyway, we'll, we'll cut that one out. <laughs> but let me see what I can do here, John. If I go to um, view screen, I'm going to admit a third player into this. Oh, that's me on, an, on another one. And if you have time, this is the way I'm going to stream the actual feed from the ultrasound because to me if if we can talk about this in its theoretical sense and then i can place a probe onto i don't know let's let's say my fhl you know in, in my thumb and we can see the fibers there and we can move just a little bit and we can move that that's going to be so valuable to me uh, are you, and and again right now these videos are just all stuff i'll edit out but i want to be able to ultimately say all right, what, how are we going to do a three minute? Yeah. I think you understand. So I want to see whether this will work if I just hit start broadcast. And has it done anything there? Yeah, it's uh, doing something. Okay, and if I go to here. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether or not um, if there were a way for me to put, oh, let me see whether or not I can, yeah. I wished I had a way, and I'm sure there is a way, John, to indicate, uh, but, but this yeah. is our axial resolution. This is our yeah. lateral resolution. That's correct. And, and this is the concept that I had never heard of. And, and that's what I want you to play with. This is what's coming out of the actual ultrasound. Um, the, the, the head, the probe, the footprint is up here. Am I correct? Yep. And so what, what's actually coming down from the, the, um, from the probe um, is where we get our echoes from. And the planes, you, you use this term unseen plane, and I'm going, what is he, some kind of a, a psychic or something? What is this? And, 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 and I think, if I'm not mistaken, the unseen plane would be coming all the way from there to there, making our third plane. So it would be, this would be up, down. Yeah. It would be side to side is our second. Yeah. And the third one is the unseen one that comes in and out of the thickness. Is that correct? Yes. I'm going to see if I can now take us to this. So that the axial resolution, is that, were those your words? Yep, that's the, sta that, that's the standard, the axial plane. And those are the ones, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take us, if, if I can just mm -hmm. bear with me, um, to here. Yes. That's, that, that's the ability to see a dot on top of another dot as yes. it comes toward me, correct? Yes. And there's this, there's this spatial pulse length 
which must have to be some kind of a blind spot that we get if for some reason we are a, a shorter distance then then is that important to you so what, what's uh if 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 two item if two items are closer together than some kind of a wavelength thing, it doesn't have the ability to differentiate that. Is that of any relevance to you? That that's that's essentially another way of saying what you saw in what you showed in the previous slide. It's nothing cleverer than that. It's just a a mathematical way of looking at uh, this one. This is just this this so slide. So that if 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 it's for some reason we we have two, if they're too close, they'll do that. If you think it's 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 you getting uh, you're seeing the wood, and uh, with poor resolution, you're seeing the trees. Ah, with better resolution. Okay, so then let me let me get rid of this, and we'll go back to the the axial resolution that you were talking about is the ability to distinguish one dot on top of the other. Yep. Whereas the lateral resolution is the ability to distinguish one dot side by side. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and there is a area, and, and this is another thing, especially because you know I'm so focus, it's point and shoot, and I simply put the sucker in the middle of the screen, whereas you gurus know how to change some kind of a focus that moves all this stuff, whatever. I, I don't have a clue about that. And sometimes there's multiple focuses and I'll see people try to do, I don't have time to do that when I'm checking out an athlete on the side of a, it's just, you don't it's have beyond to. me. You don't, you don't have to, that's, that is. Uh, uh, but you are saying, you know, I, you say I don't have to, but, but we are saying that I get a clear, well, I guess, is it not that correct that there's a zone where I get a better image? There is. There is a zone where you get a better image. There is a, uh, and, but that is, uh, you will find on most of your scanners that makes a small difference, not a big difference. Um, not something that would have me questioning whether, wh what the ana anatomical structure would be. I might have a, an issue as I related it to the extent of a compromised small ligament or something like that, yes? Uh, not even that. I don't think okay. it would make a huge amount of difference. You would only notice the picture if you uh, if you didn't have the focus in the right place, and then you put it in the right place. You would probably the adjustable focus. That is, there's an adjustable and a non-adjustable focus uh, on your system. Uh, but if the the focus that you can adjust, you have uh, you would notice the picture just looked slightly better. And that's as good as it would get um, in the area you're normally working. When you look at things that are deeper, then you would have to pay a little bit more attention to that to get the optimum picture. But uh, deeper, but, like in here or, or yeah. down in this area, yes. where the where the image quality falls off a lot. Uh, that's where, this on, is a go ahead. This is slightly. Uh, ambiguous picture in the sense that what you're seeing on this screen is if you think about what you're looking at with the probe there that looks like it's the whole length of the probe they're showing you uh, you mean from here to here or yeah, from uh, here to here no here to here it look looks like they've the way they've drawn it at the top yeah they're suggesting that that's a um, that 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 is the whole probe the whole length of the probe if that is meant it's difficult to say whether, whether they've drawn that as the length or the width of the probe in that picture. I got what you're saying. If it's the length of the probe, that's not an accurate picture. In which oh. case, you're, because because actually they uh, typically uh, when they produce the, the pulse for the ultrasound beam, uh, it's only produced by about uh, three to five elements. So that's a small section of the probe produces oh. the sound. Now You're that saying that maybe from single. here to here, it would not be that. It would be more. It would be more like from here. Oops, how come it's not working? Sorry. It would be from here to here. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Uh, a, a much smaller element. This that's actually quite a reasonable uh, 
pictorial explanation of uh, slice thickness. So if we'd moved on to talking about slice thickness yes. and we're looking <laughs> side on on the probe, that probably represents something slightly closer to the truth in that sense. But I just, it's uh, when you're looking at uh, that particular, those particular series of slides look like they were looking at lateral resolution. This and, one and, uh, and this one here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I and, think that would be what I would call the length of the probe or the sweep edge in the way my mind is working terminology wise, that would be the broad side of the broom <laughs> or yeah. the broad side of the probe. Here, but that's not, that's not what I'm seeing in those pictures. That looks more like a picture of the short axis of the probe. If you think because about it, you're looking we, at the way that the, um, this, this is looking, or because yeah. that's that is what is making you um, think that both of these are the short because it has a waist, or it comes in there at the in the the, pul the the pulse has a waist either way. Okay. Because the pulse the pulses are focused. All right, and so the, the focus is, is where the waist is the narrowest. Yes, uh, but it's narrowest in both planes, both the in image plane and the out of image plane. Oh, you're throwing me. Okay. In let's, image plane, is that the ax axial resolution? No. Let's, can, I, can I take you back <laughs> and just describe, descri see if I can describe that picture simply that we've got uh, up now. John, do you think it would work better for you if you had the ability to draw? Because if you go to a screen share, you're able to use a, you'll see what'll pop up is called a whiteboard. And it will allow you to do some actual drawing on a, let's say, whiteboard. I can't, I can't, I can't screen share on your, uh, if, if you're screen sharing, so you'll have to pop out of that. Okay, I will do just that. And I will go to screen share. Uh, done, and I will go to here. Stop. Yeah. How about now? So I go screen share, and oh, I would like to whiteboard. Oh, it's giving me the option of a whiteboard, which is good. Share. Okay. So now <laughs> we're like two we're, we're like two old geezers in a nursing home trying to figure out how to use an iphone buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that I'm, just uh, i'm the geezer you're not so much <laughs> uh let's see draw draw yes can i do something i'm going to just try and dr draw okay. the tool i've got okay so you've got you've got an ultrasound probe there yeah yep and you've got an ultrasound image coming out of the bottom of it Yes, we are a, we're a broadside ultra, ultrasound probe? Yes, broadside okay. ultrasound probe, okay. ultrasound image, uh, and you've got the, so we both can picture something like, so we know where we are. Yes, we? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is the, the plane of your picture. Yes. And the brain perceives that as a slice, as if you'd cut a piece of meat. Yeah. Tomographic slice, yes, yes. yes. Uh, the and uh, the imaginary thing that everyone thinks they're looking at with MRCT or yes, ultrasound yes. that is not an accurate assumption because what we've actually got is is a slice of meat from the butcher, and each of the dots take any random dot in that picture that represents something in the body reflecting that blob that is actually bright on our screen is 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 a reflector yeah i'm with you but if you were to look at that in long in if you can imagine that blob now on a screen there that actually represents a tube yeah it's like a sausage yes of meat yes yeah because the resolution in this plane here this way and that way 
is very good. Yes. On an ultrasound machine, this is 0.2 of a millimetre. And this is 0.2 of a millimetre. If you, if, if you ever look at, on my portable here, that you can't see, uh, it's, it is around, when I look at the very smallest things it can see, it can see structures that are s s around 0.2 of a millimetre. Yes, that's craziness, yeah. yeah. The slice thickness at its best seems to be about two millimeters. Yeah, I understand. And that's that. what people don't understand. They it, resolution. It's a piece of rice, but what I can't get my head around, John, is is that I'm looking on a two dimensional image at something that is representing a length of a structure, and and and. I don't understand what volume averaging is. I, it, it's beyond what my brain can can handle. And I think those were your words, volume Actually, averaging. And I was going to ask you what that even means. But it is. But it's. It's very. It, it, it's not easy. What you've got, if you imagine, let me have a have a think. If you imagine your ultrasound pulse is a tennis ball. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Tennis ball. And and it's one tennis ball in this plane. Yes. In the picture, it, in as it, the one tennis ball comes down here, like this, and it strikes this, and it bounces back, and it gives and you record the the tennis ball coming back and hitting the probe. Right. Yeah. Yes. And that gives you your dot there. Yes. The echo and the intensity of that based on. How hard it comes back compared to the effort that it left, but I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, in in actual fact, it's it's like a hundred tennis balls. <laughs> yes, okay. And and one of them comes back and gives you a bright mark. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And if if two came back, it would give you a brighter mark. Yeah. But they're in a narrow band. The narrow band, and you've got another tennis ball gets another hundred tennis balls gets sent off from the next spot. And they miss, so you get a bright spot and a dark spot. I, I, I thought you were speaking of that lateral um, grouping when you said a hundred tennis balls, but I'm backing no. up to say you're saying a machine gun of tennis balls is shooting from the end of this, and yeah. it's regularly getting these back. And yeah. if if a great percentage of the one hundred bullets come bouncing back, that sucker's metal. Or, or that sucker's really, really dense. Can I, can I take it, can, can I take it, make it a thousand tennis balls? Okay. You, you understand why? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, a thousand tennis balls, they all get fired at exactly the same time. Time! Yes. That, that's just a measure of the strength. The, yes, the strength okay. of your pulse yes. is, is a thousand tennis balls. Okay. All fired at the same time along the along that sausage shaped yes. line of the probe. Yeah. And what happens is that when they, those thousand tennis balls meet a boundary, yes. 10 of those get reflected back or anything up to 10. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's your grayscale, one to 10. Okay. Yeah. So on, on your machine, if your machine's set up, it expects up to 10 of those balls to come back from any, any one boundary. And if one tennis ball comes back, you get a, a very, very little bit of gray. Yes. And if 10 come back, it's as bright as it, as bright as it can be. Okay, yep. I'm with you. The other 990 balls don't stop at all. They missed the target. No, they go through the target. Oh! That's how ultrasound works. It's because, that precise. Yeah, because they go through the target only at a boundary, a soft tissue boundary, only around about 1%. The maximum. interface between um, the, the, the paramy uh, paramyceum or whatever, the, the interface between the fascia around the muscle and the fascicles yeah. of the muscle, you're yep. saying, but what about bone? W would, would 80 yeah. come back at bone? No. No, at, at, at bone 40, 430 come back at bone. Ah, uh, okay, of, I'm with you. 
of the thousand. Yes, now, yes, yes, yes. It might not be a thousand when you get there, but um, forty. This is helpful. Less, this is... Than, less than one percent at every single boundary of the tennis balls get bounce, gets bounced back. Okay, I'm with you. Between soft tissue boundaries at a bone boundary, forty three percent. So okay. four hundred and thirty tennis balls come back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you've got your ten tennis balls. Your yes. ten tennis balls that are reflected back by this quite strongly reflecting muscle uh, yes. boundary. Yes. Now, those of those ten tennis balls, they actually all they 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 strike that boundary all along this sausage. Yes. They don't all strike just at a single point. Yes. They are spread out along this sausage. Yet yeah. that dimension shows up on a two-dimensional plane. Exactly. So if they're at the back of this sausage, yes. so if we, draw, if we look now at the side of the probe, so if we look at the side of the probe, so this is the bit that isn't in the picture. So all these, all this shape. Ah, uh, this is the unseen plane. This is the, the one that is the un, in and out. Not the unseen, the unvisualized. Yes. You see it, you see what's in this plane, but it's, <laughs> but it's all superimposed. So if I had a structure there that was a strong reflector and an area here that, didn't, that was fluid, yeah? Yes. A ball would bounce back from here. Yes. And it would give you your bright spot in the picture. Yeah, sorry, the ball would bounce, forget that line. But that's the balls would bounce back from there, but the balls would go straight through there. Yes. So you would get less signal. So the signal would be weaker here. Weaker than the hyperechoic. I know you weaker hate that. Than, weaker than the brighter one, and weak, and stronger than the um, the darker one. No, let me let me draw this again. How can I can I uh, uh, erase? Let's erase that. Let's go there. Okay, and we'll go back to draw. Draw. Okay, so you've got your. Imagine that's a bit of metal. Yes. Yeah. No, no. Imagine it's a bit of fiber. Yep. A bit of, uh, and there. So we'll scribble that in. So that's normal. So we'll say and, and say that covers half the length of the probe, and then this bit. Is water, yeah? Half the length of this plane, of yes, that plane. on the yeah. narrow end of the probe. I'm yes, with you. Narrow end of the probe. Yes. So, and then you've got a bit here that's all tendon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A bit here that's all water. Yes. Yeah. Let me get my eraser. Let's rub out all that. So this spot on the screen here, if I go back into draw so this point here on the screen would be a little bit gray yeah i'm with you this bit that we said it was all tenderness tissue yes yes would be bright solid black yeah solid bright uh -huh. and this bit would be empty, yeah? Yes. Yeah, because you know you get 10 tennis balls coming back from here, Yes. five coming back from here, Yes. and none coming back from here. Yes, I, I, I am completely capable of understanding what you're saying. Good. Now, you, but you're wondering how, that just means that what how does that affect resolution of the, how does it affect the resolution of the picture well that's where that's where your comment about being off even a very small amount because this particular plane what is the plane this is referred to as uh, is, it, is it that elevation resolution that's so what, it, 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 that's that's one of the terms yes it's the it, thickness it, of that piece of salami or, yes. or and 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 the the this resolution you're saying is ten times worse than yes. our resolution is on axial or close to far 
a, a resolution or side to side, the lateral resolution. This yes. one is 10 times worse. And Around so, about that. I'm sure it is different on every machine. Yeah. But depending on the build of the probe. It's and our responsibility to try and either understand this uh, volume averaging um, p um, tennis balls. Yes. It, it's our job to try and orient the plane so we are using the narrower, better resolution um, 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 plane uh, while we're imaging. But how you... I how I use that to my advantage. That's well, and that's hopefully what I can show you now. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, this matters less when you look at larger targets. A larger target would be like the long head of the biceps tendon or would a larger target be a kidney? Uh, well, in a, in a kidney yes. in, and in a, uh, uh, where you're looking at a soft tissue and looking for changes that are less than a millimeter or two millimeters. Right. When you're looking at small tears, when you're looking at, um, at very small structures like nerves, like small things, then it becomes important. And that's why it only matters to the people who are looking at the detail. And, uh, and we'll come when we start looking at uh, uh, supraspinatus in detail, looking at tears, looking at splits in structures. It's really important you understand why some tears, you, even though the size of it is uh, uh, what looks like very measurable, something that's uh, half, a mil half a millimeter or three quarters of a millimeter, should show up very nicely and does sometimes show up very nicely on your ultrasound picture. And then sometimes it doesn't and the reason is because you're not appreciating the slice thickness and it's uh, whether that tear extends if it, it can be very small in one plane and you can still see it so long as it is long in in the unseen plane I in the understand. unvisualized plane i i i just need to be putting this into practice more and more so that i can better understand it. I, I go back to the Sano hack video of you following the distal biceps tendon. And I go back to how in awe I was as to how you were able to keep the, the, the fibers so resolved as you came down and brought it around and how it actually came into uh, you know, the, the plane. That, uh, besides you just doing it enough times, but I'm assuming you're, you're keeping those slices as you're making, you're, you're understanding the actual anatomy as it goes down, but you're keeping those fibers in either the axial uh, or the lateral planes to yes. keep them so resolved like that. And you're not allowing it to even go off a little bit because you can kill the clarity of those by doing that am i am i at least understanding that is exactly on the numbers okay. that's exactly what we're doing we are it's you're not you're well beyond to get to see those sorts of structures when in uh with that level you know in complex anatomy you need to be absolutely on plane so it isn't enough to be guided by the uh, uh by the anisotropy you know, because well, that's it, 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 it helps those of us. Thing. It helps those of us that are not as good. Because if we can keep it black, or at least close to black, I can follow the sucker around. <laughs> you can <laughs> until it, it gets until it gets tricky. Yes, and then and then you have to be a order of magnitude more specific about yes. the plane you're in. But what you had shared with me, and I told my wife this, it was mind blowing because now I can honestly use as a drill, how do I optimize more than just anisotropy? How do I pull that plane into a perfectly perpendicular plane so I'm not six degrees off? And, and it can explain how come, you know, one, uh, you know, uh, a model can be imaged by somebody who knows what they're doing, and man, that's clear. Sometimes it makes really bad um, 
uh, scanners look like they're really good just because the person doing the scanning is scanning it's it with this right technique. on the numbers <laughs> yeah. yes. yes so that's your now this is the bit that everybody struggles with what have i just drawn this is part of that is just one of those elements we have taken a single bit i am looking down on my scanner on my probe this is the footprint of your probe and i've pulled it up and aimed it at my eyes yeah basically okay. imagine you've drawn round the probe you've drawn round a probe I'm with you. Yeah. I'm just trying to pull a probe out here. I don't know if you have any picture. Do you have an image of me? Because I can't see myself. I go to Korea. Very disappointing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Imagine. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at this. Yes, that. Imagine okay. that, and you stamped it on the body, so it left a mark. Yes. This would be the unvisualized plane, the slice thickness. Yes. Yeah. That um, is, that is, that's or, or, where... Or a representation of it. It's yes. not meant to be to scale. I got you. Okay. Now, so, but, but imagine, but that, that is one, imagine that's one crystal of the scanner, or roughly, roughly its lateral resolution, that section of it. So imagine, imagine your picture down here. I don't know, I haven't got much space to draw it. And this would be the, the rotator, the, a, a bit of the rotator cuff, and that would be the groove coming through. Yeah. And these would be the pixels. You know, you've got one pixel there, one yes. pixel there, one pixel there. Yes. And that's what you see. And imagine that is one pixel wide. Yes. This is grossly out of scale. Now, sorry, take my rubber. I've done this all way too big. But, so... What do you see when you have, if I get my thick marker, so you've got a tendon, and a tendon's made up of collagen fibers, like one there, and one there, and one there. Yeah? Yes. And, and one there. And then you've got a gap. And then there's another tendon here. Or another structure there, yeah? Yes. That structure, that, so on your picture, you'd get a bright mark there on, on the screen. So you get a bright dot there on the screen, if this now is the screen. And then you get a hole here, and then another br bright dot there, yeah? Yes. If you are six degrees off, I'm going to draw these on. Each of those fibers looks like that. Yes. So one fiber that on this, sorry, imagine that's a, uh, I can't draw, that's my mouse gone crazy. If there are fibers there, and that's another fiber there, that would come, each fiber would be in its own cell. Yes. When you are at an angle, that fiber there, one fiber, yes. is in two cells. Like if 10 tennis balls were shooting at it, if the, fi if, if the fiber length would be all the way on the whole sector, all yeah. 10 would come back, as opposed to here, the, the cross-sectional area that would strike fiber would allow four to five tennis balls through. That's true, but that's not the point I'm making. Sorry. What I'm making is <laughs> that you have a structure. Let me, I've, I've explained that uh, suboptimally, so I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna wipe out as many things as I can. So, you have a fiber there. Yes. And you have another fiber here. 
and you have a gap between them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So what you would see is a dot, a space, and a dot. Yes. Yeah. You could see the space between them if that cell was smaller. Let's just make that cell slightly smaller. So we're going to make that cell. That cell. That's about one in ten. Yeah. Yes. And so that cell there is one in ten. And that cell there is one in ten. So you've got a cell there, a space there, and a cell there. Yes. Yeah. If this angle, if I get my rubber. If my fibers it doesn't give me a thicker one, never mind, that will do. If my fibers are at an angle, yeah, yes, I get in this one. So you get tennis balls hitting there, oops, there, there. Oh, I need a different thing. So you get tennis ball hits there, tennis ball hits there. We're making a splodger. So tennis ball hits there, tennis ball hits there, tennis ball hits there, tennis ball. There are only five on this one, yeah? Yeah. So you get two splodgers there, which is enough to give you a signal. In this one, you get a tennis ball hitting there and a tennis ball hitting there. And then here you get a tennis ball there, a tennis ball there. So there are tennis balls hitting at all these spots along, the, along your path. Where you're clicking right now, are you clicking um, vertical? Because the plane of the probe footprint is right toward me. Are you yeah. drawing this in a um, in a plane that follows the footprint, um, like are the are the lower dots, yeah, deep, like no, this, no. or no, are this they like just, this? This is like that, yes. Okay, that's the difficult thing. So, so imagining there are five tennis balls, we're using five because I can't be bothered to do ten. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But. Yep, so there are five yes. tennis balls in each of those categories. Yes. They're striking a, 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 these fibers, yes. uh, fibers, and there's a tear between them. Yeah? Yes, yes. So you can see the tear if the, if the fibers are in, in a straight line like this. Yes. In that plane. If they are in this plane, you don't because the tennis ball hits the fiber there and there, and so it gives you another blob there. I am just trying to get this into processing mode as I'm managing my actual scanner. Um, okay. I'm understanding what you're saying, so I'm ready to move on if you're, if, if, if yeah. you. So, so basically, when you look at a nerve, if we go back, to this so so if you look at a at a nerve uh, the median nerve for example yes what you see on the ultrasound picture is these dark blobs now this is dark means dark yeah yes yeah that's what you see on ultrasound yes if you are absolutely at 90 degrees if the fibers are straight up in this plane yes. when you get when you get to uh, if you are six degrees off of, of a small nerve if these blobs are roughly the size of this of your slice thick of your spatial resolution your 0.2 a millimeter then if they're slightly angled then the back of the bright bits, the post, the 
the bits, the bright bits at this end, not this end, fill in those dots. So it's, it, it is not a matter of the sound waves not returning, which is the case for anisotropy. It's a matter of the, the system's ability to get an echo return um, in, the same, in the same line. Yeah. So if you can line up your fibers along the, the, the axis of that un, unvisualized dimension, yes. then, you will, then, then you will get this maximum resolution, this 0.2 millimeter resolution. Yes. You know when things are 0.2 millim millimeter apart. If you are off by any amount, you lose that because structures that are in this plane here at that point yes. are in the next cell yes further back and that so, one to ten relates to around about six degrees to be in there in one end and in the other now the beam is strongest in the middle and depending on how good the scanner is it becomes less and less important so as scanners have got better you've got a slow, better and better picture but there is still sound but it's strong if, if they you're looking at strongly reflective structures then some sound is coming back from there and it blurs the picture i i never even this was never even considered on my scanning prior to my ability to completely or, or, or begin to understand what you were saying about yeah. slice, slice width. Yeah. What I guess I want to clarify is that when you're scanning, it's yeah. not that you're trying to um, image things outside of the, the orientation of the unseen plane. It's you're trying to be cognizant of placing them perfectly in the unseen plane because yes. that's what makes their resolution more precise. In yes. fact, it's more attention to that, not trying to avoid it, um, yep. that, that, that you're, you're optimizing your, your imaging with. Yes, I am, I am absolutely fanatical. And I, you know, I, I threaten my... Uh, uh, students with cattle, a cattle probe. Because <laughs> if what? If what? Keep talking. If, if what? If they, if they do this, this is this now is your whole screen, yeah. Yes. So you've got your blob there. Oops, I don't know what I've done. That's not what I want. I want that. So yeah. So you've got a blob on your screen. Yes. And you're scanning in short axis, and I do ninety percent of my scanning in short axis. Okay. Yeah. So short axis is is king. Uh, it's analogous to if, if ever you if ever you've seen policemen searching a field. Yes. Yeah. They don't line up one behind the other. <laughs> that's that's a good analogy, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and and I will tell you that again. I think that it's familiarity to you when you say short axis that what you mean to people is on the, um, on, on, on the smallest footprint that that particular object would provide a slice. Yes. Um, and, and it has nothing to do with anatomical axial, and it has nothing to do with anatomical transverse. There are yes. times that your short axis on the pec major tendon, and you'll be long axis on the long head of the biceps or, or, or close to that. It, it's that key that ultimately we need to key into as well because I'm getting what you're saying when it says short axis and I wanna get back to what, 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 what scratches the nails on your blackboard um, yeah. w w with what they do here. No, they, um, I, am, I said this to one of my students, at heart, I am a pathologist. Okay. Yeah, to me, what I do, I, I don't scan your supraspinatus in the body. 
I take it out. I put it on a flat plate and I scan it and I cut it up like a pathologist cuts up an organ. Okay, I slice okay. it through, chunk, 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 yes, all the way. Yes, 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 yes. And then I do it in long section. Chunk, 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 chunk. Okay, okay. Always moving my probe across its across the axis of the probe and i don't know if i can pick can you i i haven't got me on the screen which is fine i actually find that more comfortable but can i get can you see my probe here yes yeah so my probe is here and when i scan when i'm and, and when my students scan they move if, if my finger is an arrow they always move in the probe in that direction up a little bit higher with the probe for me john right there Yes. Always in that direction. So they always move the probe, if it's on there, yes. along this way. Yes, yes, they yes, yes. almost never move it like a knife. Okay. It's always moved like a spatula. Now you're about ready to say, and that's horrible? Because uh, now I'm getting paranoid. No, that's how you do it. That's oh, how okay. you do it. That's your <laughs> policeman in the field. I'm with you. Always, they always line up and they move along. So if you're in long section on the supraspinatus, you're always moving in the other plane. You if don't move long section and follow, you don't follow things except very, very occasionally. Back up, back up one more time and let's use long head of the biceps tendon if you can, as opposed to yeah. supraspinatus tendon. Okay, good. Yes. So I'm, when I scan supraspinatus, yes. sorry, long head of biceps, my initial scan, and in fact, most of the time, my only scan is short axis on the structure. And as I said, for me, the, I, I put the structure completely flat on, on my workbench. I take yes. it out of the body in my mind. It is flat on the workbench. And yes. that's how I examine it. So the probe is only ever at absolute, unless there's a good reason to look for some nuance. But your examination is with the structure absolutely flat on your table, on your dissecting table. You, by you don't your even you, you don't even have it in uh, uh, in your mind. You're not having it experiences the new experience the nuance of it going up and over the 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 the, the top of the, the the humerus. No, your your hand, your your hand, your probe movement. Yes eradicates that so you're saying you are you're you're taking out the long head of the biceps tendon you're stretching it out and you're placing it on the table but yeah. the the thing that is 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 making it relative that way is the way your your hand ad yeah. adjusts the, yeah. the, the the probe up and over yes i basically try to be einstein i try to curve space okay so okay okay and, i'm with and, you and my and my orientation on the probe uh, on the structure is entirely based on this thing on the table and i think where you're going to go and, and I, i'm just predicting this is that instead of them scanning it like it were flat and you're always trying what happens is that they'll 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 come like this people on do it. that yeah what what is it that you 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 were saying drives you nuts and you said well, a that, cattle prod because because when they when my and if I come back to my dot on the screen here, yes. So that's what a structure should look like, a, a short axis structure, round like that. Yes. If it become if it changes shape, if it becomes rounder, if that structure actually starts to widen, yeah. Yes. Then it has changed direction, or it's pathological. But when we're following a structure like long head of biceps that the fact that it went from being a dot to being that has told you that it's changed direction even before you see it i'm understanding you yeah so that you know that it is turning right it, it is changing direction and you then need to make so you there needs to be a response to that as it, it loses the sphere and goes more to an ovoid it's changing directions and you yes. must optimize where your probe is and the yes. plane that you have on that structure. And I measure the competence of the student where they are in their training by how long it takes them between me seeing that things change shape <laughs> and then I'll alter the angle of the probe to do, uh, to do that. The other thing they, they need to look for is if you imagine 
I'm just drawing these lines on the on, on thing to, to imagine this this top one is the probe yeah so that's the probe there yes this is so that you get a sense of depth as you're scanning a structure your blob starts here and you're following it and then a fraction of a second later it's a fraction lower yeah yes it's just moved down from on that line as soon as it starts to move downwards it also slightly changes shape in this plane yeah yes and that should cause you to fan your probe and and again it's the speed of that response so your probe goes from being in this plane to being in that plane so with you, if, it's, if it goes down you have to angle you push the probe slightly that way because the structure is moving because it means that it was going in that direction and now it's curving downwards and it's those responses those those fine tuning that you miss out that, that it's that, interesting that, because your eyes are looking at the perimeter of a structure and watching for changes in that 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 sphere uh, yeah. I, I have never even paid attention to that and and I know we're already at the end of the hour and I, I want your yeah. wife to, to to like me but but there's there's a lot of stuff that I still want to get into and I'm going to I'm gonna send you another email of which I will yeah. say I really would like to cover this the next time too but I guess one of the things that I would like to at least uh, how would I say this in my opinion or maybe I should say I've been told that the long head of the biceps tendon is, is capable of being at, functionally like a rotator cuff tendon in depressing the top of the humerus. And that as I'm scanning that long head of the biceps tendon, this is some vulnerability here, buddy, because I think I see that round shape starting to flatten and take on more of a, let's say, supraspinatus width so that it's holding that, that down. And I'm fearful, this is what's scaring me, and I'm going to have to pull out my son's shoulder here, I'm fearful that what I'm allowing to happen is like you're saying, as I come up, could I be elongating it like this i've always used what i thought to be the clarity of the fibrils to see whether they were looking like they were going oblique yep. you know what i'm saying and, and my fear yep. is that maybe i was no, not you're, you're, optimizing that that long head of the biceps i my mind sees it flattening out and taking almost a roll it does it does and you're and, and you're perfectly right and you're not you you're not wrong with that I was using that as a description okay, okay. Of, 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 how, of, of how you navigate in detail. Uh, and okay. as soon as there's any change in that shape, obviously it does flatten, but it flattens from a nice round. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and so again, you're not, that's, a, that's a, an anatomical change. <laughs> I didn't know whether, because I've never seen any good story on sequential slicing, watching it go flat. And I was just always amazed to say, that's got to be why some of those guys can tear their rotator cuff completely and they still have the depression, you know, how it goes up and over there. Anyway, John, I can yeah. talk again for a very long time. The only thing I would like to say is if you look at a sausage, a traditional yes. long so curved sausage, yes. and, and you think about cutting it or, or a hose pipe, and, yes. but, and, and, and I'm sure I'm teaching you to suck eggs to a certain extent, but, but that's how when I'm looking at a, a slice of a, 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 a long tendon or any structure i'm looking at the as you say the dots inside the tendon yes. their brightness but also their position they they change direct they change points on a good scanner you can see the dots within the tendon and what i do is i follow the individual dots so when you scan supraspinatus you should see its leading edge 
splay out as it inserts and twist and rotate. Wow. And, and you could follow each bundle yeah. into there. But you have to be at absolutely 90 degrees to them. Wow. And you have to follow each individual fiber bundle. You can't follow the whole picture. You can't follow even the whole section of the, set that front seven millimeters of supraspinatus. You have to allow, and it should be the, the dots and the, the way they behave that actually tell you what, how to change the angle of your probe as you scan them. You cannot treat the whole thing because the fibers are moving within that structure. And this, to explains, it, this explains to me why I believe that the resolution from even what I think to be an amazing scanner, this Wi-Fi Clarius, I just don't believe that the, the competency you have to watch the actual strands of the fibers inside of these structures, you know, I just think many of us, because we are not attentive to these nuances, we're, we're, we're just looking for, you know, fluid and, 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 you know, a retracting component of that. I'm, I'm fearful that there won't be, I'm desperate to have you approve a scanner that I like. And I'm fearful that, you know, it might not have that level of resolution that allows you to identify some of these things like, you know, where the infraspinatus and the supraspinatus, you know, come together and, and, and that kind of stuff. So anyway. They won't, I wouldn't worry about that because the scanner is as good as it is. The, it has the same features, the same issues. Yes. As the top end scanners. You're just the point at which it makes a difference will be different, yes. but it won't. But 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 the the better technique will work for everything. When you when you scan with that, if if what I've been saying to you is new, you will get it. Not on every structure, but you will you will see that you get more. And and it doesn't matter whether you're driving an old scanner, yes, uh, or or a new scanner. You it just allows you to get closer to the edge. I think even even this information you've provided for me would allow me to eke more out of old scanners because there's there's they're, 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 they're always attempting to take these inconsistencies away from us who don't have the depth to our understanding. Um, John, one of the things, and I and again, I want to I want to wrap this up by by saying that when you and I are scanning and when we do have the feed that's going to be coming through, I'm hoping one time and, and something inside of you is going to say, I need to have him do this and he'll be able to pull that out. The word, you know, you, you had used fan and there's sweep and there, if I don't know if, if yep. the two, and I know what it is, the 20th time I've told you, I need yep. to be able to have you on a moment be able to say, you know, do this, and I can I can provide that, uh, and yeah. and yeah. It, it it will help me. But this stuff is more important than that stuff because this stuff gives reason why yeah. wh yes. why I need to be using clarity of communication in in uncovering it. And so, that that was something that I felt when we were having our last conversation yes. that I wanted to get to. And if, if I can just make one more point with my yeah, absolutely with my marker. Uh, when we talk about adjusting planes and we mentioned about, uh, about keeping constraining, uh, one, one or more of the, uh, uh, degrees of freedom and yeah. then and, and changing one. Yes. It, this, this point about the girl from Ipanema, you've got a target here and you've got the skin here and you've got your probe here and you want to change something and when you change you want to if you want to look from if 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 you want to improve the angle you don't want to be coming down in that direction Oops. you want this is a tendon perhaps going this way sorry a tendon going that way and you see some abnormality here and you say, well, I'm not at the right angle to see it. When you change the angle of the probe to yes, that, yes, yes, 
the bit you're looking at yes. is not the same bit yes. that you're looking at there. Yes. And so when you're making the adjustments, yes. it is important we have this understanding of the target. Yes. Because if I'm just giving you an advice to change something, yes. you'll be looking somewhere else. <laughs> and there are lots of different ways of dealing with this. But when you make an adjustment, it's about knowing what the, what the, what the target of the adjustment is. If you're looking at a whole, you know, you're looking at a tear in supraspinatus. You know, and, and the tear is there, and you've got your pro. You, so, so you've got your probe there, and you're adjusting the. In, this is in short axis of the probe. There's your probe there. So you're looking at a long axis. So you see your tear in the supraspinatus, and you think, oh yes, but I've but I've got the probe, and that might be an isotropy. Yeah. Yes, I'm with you. And then you change the angle, you've got to be sure that you haven't slipped off the target. Yes. Yeah. That, that's an entire that's an entire hook that has to be in the communication as to what is the object of our concentration. Because yeah. it will be a much wider fan. It will be a much yeah. A, a much more informed sweep across the skin when we haven't swept at all on the bone. So yeah, I, th yes. those are all nuances that I'm yeah. I'm desperate so, to try to come up with a way of saying how do we deliver it because good people are out there and yet there is so it's all over the board how you tell someone to to control the yeah. probe. Yes, and that's why you. you have to think about your you you're, you're talking about a target a, a structure yes and that structure is what your orientation is based on. yes 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 yeah. and, and, and so and how how does a person in the course of delivering the best semantics first identify that i mean i know that when you're delivering clearance when you were at when you were on air traffic control you know you first said you're cleared to such and such an airport and, and you had to climb and maintain you know when you leave you turn and once we got the hang of it, even with bad communication or static and everything, there's a signature in the way that was delivered. And we knew that the transponder code would be the very last thing we would have to hear for. And right before that was the frequency. And, and yeah. so if, if you know that the person you're talking to is going to deliver this in the shortest amount of time with the greatest amount of clarity, I can know what to do with the probe. And, yes. and but but I'll tell you, you're right. If I didn't understand this, this what do they call it? Um, elevation resolution, or yep. or this this slice thickness, or whatever. I, I'm sure this isn't the end of it. But you've been you've been generous again, John. And uh, That's right. I, I I will I'll try to put together a a hot buttons uh, to talk about. And and one thing I do want to at least uh, have us explore the next time is. How, you know, can you identify the screen based on me throwing this Wi-Fi signal to one of my drone um, um, input things here? And uh, I'm getting yep. too wordy. We'll, we'll just figure that out. Anything you want to close with, John? Nope. I uh, say so have a good day. Good evening. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull up my um, recording thing. And uh... I quite like not seeing my face. It's a lot less distracting. So, 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 so this this presentation is is quite nice. Um, fair enough. I will tell you the truth. I'm not certain how to take it. Uh, uh, it's, how, it's off now. It's off now. <laughs> <laughs> so I will just try my best to figure out how it is that I can make my buddy John happy, and yeah. and, and, and 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 I will do that. But for the time being, I'm going to just try to. Uh, uh, my, my job is to get you. Uh, um, a list of things I want to talk about next time and maybe we'll get yep. a short way into that and uh, and we'll go from there. When is that next time, John? What is your, what is your schedule allow? Yeah, well, it's, it's, I don't is know. Is it best uh, Friday? Is it best? Week? Can you do yeah. Wednesday? Can you do Thursday? What, what, what is your, I suspect Thursday might be better than Wednesday. Uh, if you're up to a, a 12 Thursday or would you prefer Friday, John, I'll, I'll move my schedule around for you. Thursday is, is a better day for us this week. I know I'm busy Friday. We'll do Thursday at noon, my time, 8 o'clock your time, and thank your wife and kids again. Yep. We'll thank you, bud. Then. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.
Thanks. Bye-bye.